In this session, we'll look at how we can calculate corridor structural volumes. On my screen, I've got a drawing that represents a proposed roadway project. Let's zoom in and we'll do a quick tour. Right here, I've got an existing ground surface called EG. Here we can see the proposed roadway alignment. This is called Route 72 prop. This alignment was used to define a corridor called Route 72. If I zoom out and pan over, you can see that I have generated some cross sections for this roadway design. The goal in this session is to calculate the material volumes that represent my asphalt, binder, base, and subbase. The trick to calculating these volumes is knowing the shape codes used in the assemblies. Let me zoom out, and I'm going to pan this down. We'll find the assemblies used to define this corridor. Let me mention that these assemblies use consistent subassembly parts. For that reason, I'm going to zoom in on this top one. If I hover over this lane, we can see this was created using the Lane Super Elevation AOR subassembly part, and this one was created using the Shoulder Extend subbase. When it comes to these subassembly parts, each of these closed areas has a name. One way to identify these names or codes is by pressing Control 3 to bring up our tool palette. I will then find that subassembly part. I'll right click and come down and choose Help. And then in the Help documentation, I'll drag all the way down to the bottom. Right here I can see the four shapes. Here are their codes, and here is where they're located in the coding diagram. So pave 1 represents my asphalt, pave 2 is my binder, base represents my base, and subbase is the subbase. Let me mention that these codes are consistent for the shoulder as well. Now that I know these codes, I can very easily calculate the materials. Let me close this dialog box, and I'll close the palette. I will then zoom out and I'll pan back over to the roadway model. To compute the materials, I'll select one of the sample lines, and I'll come up and choose Compute Materials. I'd like to compute materials along the Route 72 alignment using the Route 72 sample line group. Let's click OK. As you can see, I have computed some materials already. I've got a material list here that represents my earthwork cut and fill volumes. To compute additional materials using these sample lines, I'm going to come down and choose Import Another Criteria. When I do, Civil 3D lets me select a new quantity takeoff criteria. If I open the menu, you can see that I have not yet created a quantity takeoff criteria that's going to compute these materials for me. Let's do that now. Typically, when we create a new quantity takeoff criteria, we'll do that by visiting the Settings tab on the tool space. I can actually do it right here as well. If I open this menu, I can come down and choose Create New. On the Information tab, I will give the Quantity Takeoff Criteria a name. I'm going to call this Corridor Material Calcs. And then I'll select the Material List tab. This is where I define the materials I'd like to calculate. I'll choose Add New Material. I'm going to call this material Asphalt, and I'll press Enter. For Quantity Type, I'm going to select Structures. That's because this material is not based on a surface, it's based on a shape code. Under Data Type, let me open the menu and I'll choose Corridor Shape. I can then open the menu next door, and right here I can see the shape codes used by this corridor. Pave 1 represents my asphalt shape. I will select that, and then I'll click to add it to the material. As you can see, it's going to be included in the calculation. Finally, we'll come down and choose a shape style. This represents how I'd like that material to look graphically in the cross sections. I'll come down and choose my asphalt shape style. I'll click OK. Let's create another new material. I'm going to call this Binder and I'll press Enter. This will be a Structures Quantity Type, and it will be based on the Pave 2 shape code. Let me click to add that, and then we will choose a Shape Style. I'll choose my Binder. I'll click OK. I'll create another material. This one will be called Base. It will use the Structures Type, and it will be tied to the Base shape code. Let me add that, and then we will choose the Style. Finally, I'll create the last material. This one's going to be called Subbase. Now you may be wondering, man, what if I forget to set this to Structures? Will that be a problem? Don't worry about it. You can't forget. If I open this up and choose Subbase and try and add it, Civil 3D will tell me that it needs to be a Structure Quantity Type. Let me close this. I'll set that to Structures. I will then add the Subbase, and then I will choose my Subbase Shape Style. Let me click OK. At this point, I have finished defining my quantity takeoff criteria. I'll come down and click OK. I can now use this criteria to calculate materials. Let's click OK. From here, I can select the shape codes in this drawing that represent the materials I'd like to calculate. Now I can do this one at a time. 
For instance, the Route 72 PAVE 1 code represents my asphalt. If I like to do things really fast, I can come up and click Map Objects with Same Name, and Civil 3D will do the associations for me. Notice it's going to calculate the materials using average end area. There are some other options here. Average end area is perfect for our needs. Let me come down and click OK. And that's it. My material volumes have been calculated. They are now stored under a material list. I'm going to click to rename this. I'll call it Corridor Structural Materials. And I'll press Enter. And then I'll click OK. If I'd like to see those material volumes displayed in a tabular form, I could select one of the sample lines, and then I'll come up to the Launchpad panel and choose Generate Volume Report. I'd like to generate that report using my proposed alignment and sample line group. Let's use the new materials list that we just created. From here, I'll click Open, and I'll select my desired report. I'm going to choose Select Material. This is a report that comes with Civil 3D out of the box. I'll then come down and click Open. I'll click OK. I will then click Yes to allow the scripts. And if I drag the slider up and down, I can see the calculated material areas and volumes on a section-by-section -section basis. When I'm finished reviewing the data, I'll click the X to close the browser. I'm going to press Escape to deselect the sample line. Let's zoom out, and we'll pan over to our cross-sections. Notice we can see that those materials have been stylized using the shape styles that we assigned earlier and that stylization is consistent on all of the sections. These shape styles are a great way to validate the materials that have been calculated, and since they represent sampled items, I can easily turn them on and off using my view group properties. For example, if I select one of my sections, I can come up and choose view group properties, and here on the sections tab, I can use the draw setting right here to display or hide those materials, Likewise, if I wanted to, I could change their style from here as well. For right now, I'm going to leave everything the way it is. I'll click the X to close the dialog box. So, the next time you need to calculate structural volumes along a corridor, take a look at the shape codes used in the assemblies. Leveraging these codes makes it very easy to specify and extract any of the structural materials that make up a corridor model. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.